Hey, it's two o'clock, uh, as promised. Uh, it's John Clements. I'm here with Wynn Cogill. Hi, Wynn. John. At the UMass Orchard in Belchertown, Massachusetts. Today's Friday, uh, not Friday, what am I thinking? <laughs> Today's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. January 14th, 2020, for the record. You get busy? Dizzy? So, as promised, I got Wynn here and I'll flip the camera in a minute. This is a, a group of 30 Evercrisp trees on Geneva 41. Oh, that are five, six years old. I can't remember. And uh, thinking out loud here, um, lar it's a tall spindle. They're planted three feet apart. Let's uh, flip the camera now, if I can see where now to flip the camera. Maurice Tugas is watching. Wave. Hi, Mo. We got four people watching. There we go. Let's flip the camera. Oop. And this is, here's the block Evercrisp. Actually, it's just 30 trees. This is a research orchard. And like I said, these are planted on Geneva 41. And uh, you can see the graft union is nice and high out of the ground. But I've been, these are a tall spindle. And I've been pretty much just probably minimally pruning these. But this year I noticed how, I've noticed for a year or two how thick they're getting and fruit color suffering. And it's time to start doing a little more uh, fine work on these Evercrisp rather than just taking out two or three big branches. So with that, I think I'll hand it over to Wynn. He's gonna do the uh, <laughs> the pruning. <laughs> well, I see, I see who's watching and what they're saying. <laughs> oh, I see. All right, Wynn, you wanna go ahead? We'll probably be here about 15 minutes doing this, that's all. And I think when I finish, it'll be recorded and hopefully you'll get something out of it. We walked through a tree or two at the beginning and I think we're on the same wavelength. Go ahead. Well, we Make just wanna look at these as we walk down a little bit. We've got a lot of big wood in the top, a lot of big wood coming out in the aisle. So our first rule in tall spindle is take two to three uh, big branches out at the very least. I'm a firm believer in no big wood and tall spindle at all. So if we need more than two or three, we'll do it. But I also agree with John that we, uh, we need to uh, do some fine pruning. The thing with Evercrisp that I know is it tends to be a terminal bearer. So a lot of these shoots all have a fruit at, at the end. And we're just talking about looking at, can you tell fruit buds on apple? And with Honeycrisp, you cannot tell by looking if it's fruit or vegetative, but pretty clear to me on Evercrisp that I think we can. We're, we're doing some work on dissecting Honeycrisp and that'll be another topic for another day, John. So we're gonna just look at these. We did prune one right here. You can see how thick they are in the top, John. And, and we've got to get some of that big wood out or we're gonna shade the bottom. So here's one we did. We made some big cuts. One, cut this one back with a big cut, big cut, big cut. And I did a couple up in the top. So we've got that about done where we want it. We singled some out. So we've got a lot less uh, bushiness. I guess that's a good word, John. And, uh, but we well, left a lot of fruit buds in we, there. We pushed it in, too. We pushed the tree in by singularizing. I, we didn't, and he'll talk about it when, uh, but these Evercrisp have a tendency to split into two branches. Two or three or four. And I find so a good we example. May even, we may even cut them back to trying to make them more horizontal. Yeah. And not have these uh, pendulant branches. I love it. You listen to me. I say I like, my, I like all the branching to kind of look horizontal when I get done. See that? Okay. So we're going to start with a new tree. We haven't touched this tree yet, and we've got some big wood. But you see underneath, we've got some ni nice fine wood that's going to have some good fruit throughout the tree. But we just have to speak, open it. Speak up louder. We just, just have to open it up to take the big wood out and leave the fine wood. So, I mean, some people might do this. I think on a really big one, I'd rather take it all the way back. And I like to leave a good inch, inch and a half stub so I get some renewal cuts out of there. And I like to go and make these big cuts in the top to uh, open these up. I may, I may come back to these top ones again. Le leaving some stubs to get some regrowth, perhaps. Yeah. I think you, yeah. Well, unless you're going to train that for the leader, John. No. Cut, well, actually, it goes up through the... I think you're going to leave so let's. So I don't want to redo those hooks, so let's do that other one. Can you read? So I am lazy. I agree. There we go. Huh? That's good. Thank, that's... I got you figured out. <laughs> Least amount of work possible. So I've got most of the big cuts made. Maurice Tugas says he lost the stream. Is anybody else still here with me? Dan Albinder says, should you prune first year planting or wait to second? No, 
I, I, I touch up first year. First year, you got to get that, make sure that leader is dominant. Yeah, and, and uh, take out any big wood. And in first and second year, you've also got to grow the tree from the bottom. You've got to use some plant growth regulators from Massachusetts down to Jersey, up in New York, maybe not, but you've got to get branching. And I like to use PGRs to make branches. That's a whole so, different talk though. What's going on here? I, these ever Chris do these, go ahead. Well, I haven't got there yet. We well, were we're, I'm not going to, you want to, you want to apostolize on PGRs for well, branching. I do, I do. We <laughs> so well, I'm going to take some big wood out and, and I'm just going to cut back to a, to weak ones. So they do want to split. We've got lots of branches, but I want to keep this a tall spindle. So I'm going to cut back to some weaker wood. Oh my God. There goes all my apples. You're still going to have more than well, I know. Now, we didn't count any buds on here. How much fruit do you want on this tree, John? We should have asked that question first. Well, we should have, but we're just kind of. Well, but, but while you're filming and not asking me too many questions. Well, that's a good. Tell me how many buds you well, have. How many pieces of fruit? If, if I, I'd like about 70 to 80, I think. Okay. I don't think it can hold, I don't think these can hold many more ever, Chris, than that. Let's just say 80. And let's say if I went out here and counted the buds, assuming I can count fruit buds, <laughs> there's probably, I guarantee there's, oh, I'd count probably 200 on here. All right, you can't take forever, you know, you got to no, keep moving. Correct pruning and adjusting crop load is the number one thing you can do. So, so Maurice Tugas is back on. Good. James Masoni's here. Larry Lutz is watching. Hi, Larry. Peter Udemans is watching. Any comments? Anybody want to comment? Peter Udemans? There's no Peter. cranberries up here. <laughs> I think we're about so. done, John. Do you like what we did? I think we've got the top thinned out. I like it, but you need to move about twice as fast. Well, I'm getting old. I can't move twice as fast. So. <laughs> I think if we counted these quick, and I think I'm going to do it. I think what I failed to do up to this point was some of the fine pruning work. And now that these trees are filling out. Um, about 70 buds on there, John. Only 70? 70, yeah. I bet you, buds, I bet you there's more buds, than that. Buds. Well. Sometimes fine flowers, I got a lot of fruit on that. Yeah, but if I only want one fruit yeah. per bud, that's 70 I apples. I've got 70 or 80. I didn't count the top. Yeah. I, think I, bet, you, I, I bet you got more than you think. close to right where you want. Oh. I like the leaves one bud per fruit because you're not going to set all those flowers but i think we're about where we want to be peter wants to know where the snow maurice says the temperature's in the low 80s here <laughs> somebody i think james masuni's in belize and uh mo and larry are in jamaica the guys on vacation have enough, enough time to watch video and but this is time. this is fun isn't it now i think when i just i don't know how you guys if you can see this they look really good we and I, those two trees together. Yeah, we're going to do one and more. We're going to do one more? Okay. Four, three in a row. How so about just kind of, I don't know if you guys can see, but, you know, that. Why don't, don't we do these three and then we'll do, right. a, do a debrief and be done. Yep. Yeah, we're not going to take too long. No, so let's do that. I'd like to get the big wood out of the top. Cut your I want you to just prune and not stop. I'll try and. Oh, well, you, you ought to be able to feel your way through this now. <laughs> We're, we're, if we decide to keep fine wood, you're just kind of making sure it's a little bit singled out, aren't you? Yes. You know, not not letting those splits stay in. That should help reduce the... Uh, that's too big, so I'm going to yeah, take yeah, down yeah. a couple of fruit buds. I got a nice weak one. I don't want these hangers in here, so I'm going to thin those out, John. Yep. That's too big on this side, so kind I'm down to a nice... Kind of starting to make them look horizontal. Down to a nice flat horizontal yep, yep, table. Yep, getting rid of that weak dangling wood. Yeah. Yep. This guy's too big. We're going to go all the way back. John, take a stub. Am I going fast enough now? Am I going to get back today? I'd say that you are you probably need to move on almost. <laughs> I think we're about done. Can you, can, you, can you prune at that pace for about eight hours? Uh, I could do ten. Ten? Yeah, yeah. you're full of it. <laughs> all right, let's be brief. we got three trees. I might clip the... Uh, 
The top's a little bit if I had, a, had an extension clip. Yeah, over. usually what I walk through is with a pole pruner yeah. and just if something... I, I would just tune need, up that yeah, top. Probably shorten them maybe a little bit as, well, as I they... I might even take this one to the straight at, up because I don't want it... Yeah, well... Floppy. Yeah, yet. but I like to crop and flop and then I can cut that off. Well, There's a great example of that. Well, we could, we could argue about that all the day. Master, the master of crop and flop. Yeah. Maurice Togus says, Maurice Tugas says, looks good, Wynn. That's, wow. Well, all right. So we got three trees. I think they're about right. And uh, I think I if we had our electric pruners, we could run through this block in about a day. One acre per day, not 30 trees for one acre. Okay. Any you questions? Didn't, Any questions you, from the peanut gallery? You didn't realize this was a job interview, did you? I did. A, oh, did. <laughs> Should I hire him? <laughs> Andre Tugas says, nine foot trellis. Um, yeah, it's almost 10, I'd say. I'd say it's, uh, well, I'm 6'3", I'm so that's 7, it's about 9. Hey, guys, I, if I had planted 10 acres of these, I think I could retire from extension. What do you think? It depends well, if you had a good market or not. Well, I'd hire you at, at what's minimum, what's what's agricultural minimum wage, 8 bucks an hour? No, well, <laughs> probably 15 in Massachusetts because you're one of those states. And no, and no, no overtime for you. <laughs> All right, we, let's go. We said we we're going to do you about 10, 15 minutes. I think we covered some bases there. Hold on a second, Wynn. Thank you. Those do look really good. I'm impressed. And they're actually pretty easy to prune. You just got to spend a little time on the fine work. Big, fall, cuts, big cuts and then flatten them out. Follow the tall spindle uh, pruning. And Andre says he's got pruning you can do. All right. How's that sound? I like it. All right. All right, everybody. We'll uh, save this as a recording. And uh, uh, hopefully you enjoyed it, got something out of it. Hold on a second. I'll rotate the camera around so I can say goodbye. Goodbye, all you those in warmer climates. It's really not that bad here. <laughs> all right. Take it easy. Bye.